Welcome to East Coast Online. We are so excited that you guys are here. I'm David and this is my buddy Christian and we're pastors here at East Coast. Man, we want you to have the full experience of everything we're doing today. And to do that, we have a chat available on all our platforms. We wanna encourage you, jump into the chat, maybe tell us where you're from and let's get ready to have church as a community. Also for your kids, we have an incredible experience for preschool and elementary. You can click on any of the kids' resources and we love it for you to be able to get involved. We've heard some incredible testimonies from parents that had never had a chance to be a part of Kids Church, that they're now watching the videos and interacting and they're loving it. It's really cool for them to be able to actually be a part of Kids Church a little bit now. That is really cool. You know what's also cool is that we are still being the hands and feet of Jesus yeah. in our communities. And we have giving available right now. Man, we would super love it if you would partner with us in this time because we are still feeding families that are in need and doing the work of the church. So we have giving links on all our platforms, however you're watching it. If you could partner with us, that would be amazing. Our food pantry has been in full swing during this crisis. In fact, just since it started, we've given away 65,000 pounds of food. And last year in total, it was close to a million pounds of food that we've given away. We've got something really cool that's going on right now. Why don't you tell them about it, David? Check this out. What we're gonna do is for every share, we're gonna give a dollar to Second Harvest on top of what we're already giving. Wow. And one dollar will feed one family for one day. So imagine that, man, if you, we got 50 shares, we could feed 50 families. That's, awesome. that's incredible. Plus, we're getting the gospel out to all of our friends and family. Man, that's incredible, guys. We want you to share these services. Absolutely. Well, thanks for coming to church today. Service is about to start. Let's jump right in. Hello friends and family, so glad to have you join us today for our East Coast Christian Center online service. My name is Pastor Dan Stahlbaum, I'm co-lead pastor here at East Coast with my son, Pastor Matt Stahlbaum. I uh, just wanted to start out by saying we're so glad you're safe and able to watch our services and we are starting a new sermon series beginning this week. Pastors Matt and Jessica will be sharing with you in just a little bit. During this series, we're going to talk about relationships, all kinds of relationships, not just marriage, but marriage, uh, single, dating, uh, regular friendship, raising children, all of that stuff. We're also going to talk about relationships in good relationships and bad relationships and sort of those that are in between. And you don't want to miss any of this time we're going to share together. Next week, I'm sharing on the top 10 things I've learned in 66 years of life as well as 44 years of marriage. And it will apply to all levels. I'm not just going to talk about the top 10 things on marriage. I'm going to talk about the top 10 things that have affected relationships in my life, both, both negatively and positively. We'll have a good time doing that. I want to share one thing before we pray and get into worship, and that's something, a tip I heard on Facebook, which is, of course, the fountain of all wisdom. A lady was sharing about how her husband, when he found a cockroach in the kitchen, went nuts, cleaned the kitchen from top to bottom, treated it for, for the insects, and then sanitized and lysoled everything, and the kitchen sparkled. And then the lady said at the end of the post, tomorrow I'm putting the cockroach in the bathroom. <laughs> anyway, I thought it was a good idea. I want to pray and uh, go before the Lord and then we'll worship. Father, we love you. We honor you. You are a great God and a great King. Your word tells us that you will complete the good work, the good work that you've begun in us. God, we thank you for everyone here, your beginning work, no matter where they find themselves, beginning after knowing you for 40 years or beginning and they don't really yet know you. It's still you working in us, both to will and to do of your good pleasure. Father, I pray you touch every heart, every life as we gather together here. I pray that, Lord, as we worship you, you would get all the honor, all the glory, all the credit. We are so grateful to serve you no matter what season of life we're in. In Jesus' name, we pray. And your promises never fail. Let's worship. Your love. 
future and my hope Your promises never fail Your promises never fail Your promises never fail Your promises never fail Thank you Jesus
rare condition this day and age to read any good news on the newspaper page. And love and tradition of the grand design, some people say, is even harder to find. Well, then there must be some magic clue inside these gentle walls. Cause all I see is a tower of dreams. Hey, I just want to welcome everybody to our online experience. We're just really glad that you're here with us. My name is Matt, and this is my wife, Jessica. We are co-lead pastors at East Coast Christian Center. We've been married for 16 years. We have three children. And uh, my wife, you've been a pastor for about two years now. Two years. Awesome. I just had my two-year anniversary. That's right. I've been a pastor for 16 years, and we've been in ministry together all of those years, 16 years. And it's just exciting to uh, do this with you today as we're kind of changing gears into a new series after Easter. Yeah, we had an awesome weekend with you guys on Good Friday and Easter last weekend. And this week, we are starting a new series called Relationship Goals. In a normal environment, all of our relationships, friendships, sibling relationships, parent-child, coworker, boss, marriage, dating, they all have their own challenges. But in this state of staying at home and quarantining, these challenges can become say highlighted. That's a good word, right? Yeah. They become highlighted, to say the least. So we're excited to talk about this for the next few weeks. That's right. As we go into this series, this relationship series that we're doing, I wanted to remind you of a video we did last week. It was incredible. All of uh, many of the singers and worship leaders from our campuses at East Coast, we have four locations, two in Merritt Island, the Parkway and the Avenue. We have Coco and Vieira. They got together and they sang this incredible song, Amazing Grace. What I love about it too is it's also really a picture of not only singing, but the production and the video editing and all the things that came and, and made that happen. So I would, we'd like to share that with you right now because I think we all need a little extra grace. Amazing grace has been this hour that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I found was blessed.
If you've never been to one of our buildings, we would love to invite you to that, but we want to let you know that church is not a building. It's actually a family that you join. And so whether you're in a home, a park, or your car, or wherever you're watching this, we love that you're here. And we would also like you to share this message with a friend. Invite them into the family. This is a great opportunity to, to ask an aunt in Kansas or, or a cousin over in Cocoa, Florida, say, hey, will you join this? Or a neighbor as you walk in the evening or whatever. Ask somebody to join this with you and invite them into the family. We are in a relationship series called Relationship Goals. And the title of this message is called Love God, Love People, Love Life. Yes, yeah, so let's start with this passage from Luke, Luke 10, 25 to 37. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law, he replied, how do you read it? He answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself, so he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? In reply, Jesus said, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. Which, which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus told him, go and do likewise. As we're looking at this uh, passage of scripture, I'd like you to go back to verse 28. And it was after the two commandments that were very important were said. And it says this, you have answered correctly. Jesus replied, do this and you will live. And I just want you to remember that phrase. Maybe you could even write it down or highlight it on your iPad or take a note of that, that, word, that uh, line, do this and you will live. Very important. Let's pray. Jessica, will you, will you pray for us? Yes. God, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for the ability to be together, even when we're so far apart from our church family, our family and friends all over the place, that we actually can, can come together and hear your word and be encouraged. God, I pray that every heart would be open to your word, that every eye would be open, that our minds would be just open to understand the things that you have for us today, right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, when I was younger, we used to go to this place called Camp Calacqua, and really, we still go there today. We bring our teenagers there every year for summer camp. It's incredible. And now Camp Calacqua is a pretty incredible place. They have a water park. They have big slides. They have lazy rivers. It's pretty neat. But back when I was a teenager, they didn't have all of that. They had this one feature, and it was this big, beautiful spring. And the spring was kind of the source and really the reason why that you'd pick that camp. It was amazing. Florida Springs are like 71 degrees. It's about 60 feet deep. On that spring, there was a blob, and we would launch some people in the air. Back in uh, the 90s, we didn't have all the laws that they have of today. And so sometimes the guys, the 400-pounders, would launch the 100-pound girls, and we've seen some people fly, okay? And it was incredible. And it, it was so the blob was on the spring. We had this really cool uh, rope swing that would go out, and it was where... Uh, we swam, and, and there was a canoe, and, and it fed the lake, and it was this, or excuse me, fed the river. It was really neat. Even, we even had baptisms from this spring. It was really like the source and the reason why you'd pick, pick Camp Kalakwa. Uh, one year, though, uh, when I was a little bit older, I, I was probably 18, 19, we were, we'd heard that the spring stopped running. And uh, we, were, we were concerned because that was like kind of the reason why we picked this camp. And so me and Pastor Eric, and I, I imagine uh, someone else went with us. I don't remember exactly who it was. I think it was Pastor Chris. It was always me, Pastor Chris, and Pastor Eric. We would go, and we would check it out. And so we did. We got there. And this beautiful, crystal clear, ice-cold spring that fed everything was completely dead. It had turned into a Florida lake. And a Florida lake full of alligators and snakes and lily pads and algae and the whole nine yards 
Floridians, we know we don't swim in, in our lakes, okay? We just don't do it because we feel like living. You know what I'm saying? We don't feel like getting eaten by gators, all right? So anyway, um, we got there, and we were, we were pretty concerned. And so we began to pray, and we prayed for this spring. In fact, I, I remembered in the Bible there was a guy that threw a stick in the water to make the water sweet again, right? And I remember when Moses hit the rock, and, the, the, you know, the rock started flowing water. And so I thought, what if I throw a stick in the spring? And sure enough, I did. I chucked this big old stick in the, the spring, and it literally stuck in the middle and stuck out the top because that's how thick and nasty the top was. And we'd left, and we prayed, and we, we would hope that that spring flowed again. And sure enough, when our summer camp was about two months later, the spring was flowing again, and the life was flowing again, and we were so excited because that's one of the reasons why we went there. And uh, as I was telling you this story, you'd, you'd ask this question like, how does a spring die? How does it stop flowing? And if you understand the water in Florida, basically the ocean evaporates, the clouds pick up the moisture, it rains on our land, the water goes down into the soil, it, it uh, Uh, goes through the sand and the dirt and the rocks and all the things to get through into our aquifer uh, system, the underground lakes and rivers of Florida, the pressure builds up and then it shoots out and it flows out. And and really, we tap all of those for fresh water. We tap all of those for drinking water and those type of things. And the deeper you go, the the better the water is. And in fact, Florida in general, there's many water crises in high populated areas because they've tapped them so much for sprinklers and all sorts of things that we're starting to have to ship water in the area because we just don't have enough water. And, and here's the point of that story, and, and really the big point of the scripture is that the entire source of life for that spring came from an original source, and when it was dry, nothing was left. And the entire source of our life comes from God, and then it flows into us, and then out of us into relationships. And, and when we don't have it flowing into our relationships, we have to go back and look is my source being cut off? Or even have I ever been connected to the source? I think a lot of us are feeling this, right? Like I talked earlier about our relationship struggles being exacerbated because of this added stress stress and pressure. And so we have these extra COVID-19 stresses. We have our routines being destroyed. Our rhythms are completely out of balance. Our hobbies have been removed. We're spending more time together than we are used to. (laughs) <laughs> we are homeschooling. Now, we already were homeschooling, but yeah. somehow, some way, homeschooling has gotten harder. This is different because so, not only are we homeschooling, but our kids aren't going to soccer practices. Yeah, it's They're very not different. seeing their friends. And yeah. This is not normal homeschooling. And this I'm is more distracted than ever before. Way, and so, yeah. like, I'm not helping anyone. And then we have some people that I've talked to, they have their adult children back in the nest. Yeah. So they were empty nesters. They, they got college, used to that. Now and now all their adult children are back. And how, why that, while that's great, it also adds extra relational tension. Yeah. And then combine that with the normal tensions of relationships, the normal pressures of life crushing us, our own pain causing us to lash out at others, and then our relationship with God just needing to be stronger. Yeah, and so don't be discouraged right now if you're struggling, because I think we're all struggling, and we all have struggles, don't we? But the good news is, is God wants to meet us in that struggle. He wants to walk us through those dark places and those dark seasons and even through the valley of the shadow of death. We can fear no evil, and he'll get us to the light places, to the green pastures. God's going to lead us into the light. That's right. Let's go back to the scripture to look at uh, these three that I just mentioned to find the answers. Again, these were the normal pressures of life crushing us, or my own pain causing me to lash out at others, and our relationship with God needing to be stronger. Yeah, let me read the verse that kind of sets off this teaching today. And as we're going into relationship goals, I want to remind you that this is a general teaching on relationships. You're going to hear from Pastor Dan and his 44 years of marriage experience. You're going to hear from uh, me again. You're going to hear from you again. You're going to hear from other uh, singles. We're going to do some special teachings for for singles only and for married couples, uh, especially pro tips for them. And you're going to see a lot of different things because we have opportunities with the internet to do a little more. And so this is kind of our opening general session. And we're going to go from Luke chapter 10, again, verse 27 and 28. And he answered, and these are the greatest commandments. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus said, you've answered correctly, do this, and you will live. So if my relationship with God needs to be stronger, then I think point number one is we have to put God before people. 
Before we have relationship goals with people, we must first have a relationship with God. And I found this verse from St. Augustine, and he lived, he was born in the year 354. And so to hear him say this is amazing. He says, talking to God, you have made us for yourself, and our heart is restless until it rests in you. That's good. How restless is this season right now? And our hearts will continue to be restless until we rest in God. No matter what relationships we have or don't have, no matter where you are at with that, we all can have a relationship with God. If you're sitting at home alone right now and you haven't seen people in days and days and maybe weeks, you are not alone. You can have a relationship with God. Right now, we need him more than ever we because we can't lean on the things like we normally have had. That's right. And I've even been asking myself this question, uh, how does God work in this season of our life where we are separating, where we are quarantining, where people are shut down? And can God work through social distancing, these type of things? And as I'm reading my Bible, I'm seeing all sorts of encouraging words. You know, in the book of Acts, Peter was walking, and it was said that people would get them in Peter's shadow that they might be healed. Like they didn't even have to have hands laid on him, them, but the power of God was so strong that it would flow from the shadow of a person. And think about that being six feet apart from somebody. It's God can still work from them to you. Uh, You know, in the book of Matthew, uh, Jesus was going to go to a place to heal somebody. And the person looked at Jesus and said, you don't need to go there. Your word can heal them from here to there, from this city to the next. And Jesus said, that kind of faith, wow, I've, I've never heard that kind of faith. This is incredible. And Jesus' word literally went from one city to the next and healed them. You know, in the book of Acts, uh, the Gentiles, these would be like us, me and you, we're the Gentiles, non-Jews. They heard about God from God, literally, literally led Cornelius to him. Then Peter and the Christians showed up. And as the, as Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell on the Gentiles. Like nobody touched them. Like the Holy Spirit just fell on them. And the Bible says, as they were Listening, you know, many of the books in the New Testament were actually letters written to the church by Paul, and he wasn't actually there. It was as people read those letters, their lives were changed. Surely God can use a video. Surely God can use a text message. Surely God could use even a postcard. This might be the season where we go back to the 80s and we start writing some people some postcards. You know what I'm saying? This is a way that we can get the word of God to people. In fact, God is not limited or restricted by what we're used to or what we're comfortable with. That's right. It's so good. But he needs to be first, right? God needs to be first in our lives so he can supply us with the ingredients for everything and everyone else. Because me without God is I want what I want when I want it. No, Mm -hmm. you're not allowed to comment on that. (laughs) (laughs) But with God, we get more than we deserve so we can give it away. And in order to have my relationship with to grow with God, I have to put God before people. I have to look at the people in my circle around, around me who are speaking into my life, and I have to ask the question, is this per- person going to help me with my purpose for which God made me? Or is this person going to add to my life godly things or take from me these godly things? And does this mean that people don't matter? Like we got to cut out all the people in their life, in our life, if they don't line up with God. No, that's not what it means. But it leads us to our second point is really this, is that we've got to put people before our own pain. You know, our our pain is what keeps us from resolving issues. It keeps us stuck in behavior. It keeps our relationships under pressure if we don't ever deal with our pain. And, And our pain includes things like our pride. This is our ego getting in the way of our life and making decisions based on what's best for me. And it includes our past experiences and our past hurts. And it also includes just our perspective, like the way that I was raised, the way that I think, the way that I'm always right, and the way that I believe the world should work. This is what gets in the way of really our love for people. And during this season, I've been asking God to show me things during this crisis, this pandemic, COVID-19. And I've been journaling them. And it's something that I do. I journal a little different than you. You journal almost daily by the date. I just write down lots of notes and things. And I I keep them on my iPhone. And I end up using a lot of these things in in inspiration and in teaching. And, you know, I've been asking God to show me things. Like, show me how to take what the enemy has meant for evil and turn it for some good. You know what I'm saying? how to find blessing in the middle of this crisis and, and all of that. But God showed me something really different. And this is going to kind of, it, it's, it's a little hard for me to share this because it's, it's a very sensitive subject. I'm going to be honest with you, very sensitive. And I might not be the most qualified person to talk about this, but God began to show me something through this process, uh, this process of going around to stores, walking the street at night, and seeing people's reaction to me. 
So like as I'm walking down my neighborhood, I would see people ahead and they would see me and almost like freeze and go to the other side of the road because they don't want to get near me because they don't know if I have sickness in my body, right? Or I'm at Publix or Walmart and I would surprise somebody as I turned the corner and they would jump back like there's something wrong with me, like I'm a pariah or I have the plague. And, and I'd seen this reaction. I thought this is so unusual to be like this. And then also seeing people in masks trying to avoid the air that I'm breathing. And as I was watching this, the Lord began to speak to me about people that have been avoided in these types of ways, but for no good reason. Like, we're actually trying to stay away from a legitimate sickness, but there's people groups that have been marginalized and treated with racism and prejudice, and they've been avoided. They've been, hey, I'll walk on the other side of the road. I don't even want to breathe the air that you breathe. And here's the thing that God's been showing me, and, and I think, you know, for me, I've never been judged by the majority. You know, I've never experienced true racism in my life. I've, I've not experienced those things, but what I... What I believe that God does is he gives us glimpses of pain that we could see the other person's perspective, that we could begin to get a picture of what it's like to be in their shoes, to get a little bit of empathy or sympathy for someone else's experience. And I believe that God could even show us during this time how to love people that are overlooked. You know, our, our church... The church would be accused often of being judgmental, like you're, that type of person's not welcome here. You, you can't come into these, these doors, into this building. I think what God would want to teach us during this season is to, to really understand what a person who's being kicked out and cast out by quote-unquote religion, what are they going through? How can I love them? How can I love that person above my pride, of my prejudice, of my perspective, of my past, how I was raised, my experiences, what I think is right, what I think is wrong. In fact, the chapter and the story that we just read was about a good Samaritan. And the story goes that a Jewish man, he falls down beaten and wounded and he's hurt and he's dying. And a priest walks and sees him and what? Crosses to the other side of the road and keeps going. A, a religious man, a Levite, walks up and says, ooh, I can't deal with this, goes to the other side of the road. But a Samaritan comes up a Samaritan comes up and says, I will help this man. I will help him now. And this, this would be like this. The Samaritan was hated because of their race by the Jews. They were ha considered, quote, unquote, half-breeds, fo following a false religion. He overlooked his own pain of being marginalized. He overlooked his own pain of being put down, of being cast out. And he looked at the pain of this man and said, I'm going to love this person over my pain. Even though this Jew might have hated me, he's in more pain right now. Let me put myself in his shoes and let me help him. Let me help him. It's the religious leaders that couldn't see past their own pride, their own prejudice, their own perspective to help a man hurting. And we'd ask this question, how does that help us in relationships. You know, Jesus is painting a picture that's so strong right here. He's saying, look, it doesn't matter your pride. It doesn't matter if, if you've been hurt. It doesn't matter if, if you have this perspective or that. You must love people before your pain, yeah. before your pain. And Jesus went on to say that, that it's the one that has mercy. Mm -hmm. That's the one that loves their neighbor, that loves the other person. It's the one that shows someone mercy, that shows them love, despite the judgment we'd like to cast. You know, this helps us with our marriage, too. This isn't just some big talk on, on racism and prejudice. You know, when I look at you and I try to put myself in your perspective and put myself in your shoes, it's a lot easier to understand where you're coming from. Mm -hmm. It's easier to forgive. It's easier to connect. And, and the same, when you put yourself in my shoes yeah. and you say, what's he going through right now? Can I put my pain aside? Can I put my pride aside? Can I put my perspective aside and see what's going on in you? We have to love. In fact, a quote by Dr. Henry Cloud says this, pride asks who is right. Humility asks what is right. That's so good. So that first point, God before people, it really just boils down to loving God. 
And then the second point, people before my pain, boils down to loving people. And our third point simply is love life. And I kept trying to pick a different point because I'm like, God, you really want me to tell people to love life now in a yeah. pandemic, like for real? And he said, yes. And I mean, as a suppose, I suppose as a generality, we could assume that introverts may possibly be loving their life a little bit more right now than extroverts, right? And pets, pets for sure are loving their life right now, right? Like our dog Denver ha only has to go in his crate at nighttime and he is like, this is amazing. He is loving it. We actually have some pictures of Denver and all the fun he's doing. He is in um, the boys' bathtub. He literally like jumps into the bathtub because he wants to drink out of the faucet. Then another one, he's in our bathtub. I walk into our bathroom. He's in our bathtub waiting for just waiting. You'll see the waiting picture. For yes, he's doing chalk because there's a lot of chalk going on outside right now. We have outdoor activities. And so he has a chalk like lipstick thing going on. And then I'm trying to work out because, you know, every gym is closed. And so now I have to figure out how to work out at home. And he is literally in my face while I'm trying to work out on the ground. And then, of course, his typical slide off the couch. Yeah. One weird, of the best moves he, he has, he slides off the couch, legs on the couch. Tiny little legs on the couch. Feet on the floor. Other legs on the ground. And he holds it for like three minutes. It's impressive, actually. It's amazing core. Yeah, but our dog, he's in heaven right now. But for the most part, this whole thing is just not easy. You know, I've had friends miss their grandparents' funeral. They never even got to say goodbye. My friend almost lost her husband uh, to COVID-19. It was really scary. He's doing great right now, praise God. Uh, my brother is a doctor in Kansas, and I'm concerned for him all the time. We have so many friends, people who go to this church who are nurses and doctors and in the medical profession and work at grocery stores, and these are the front lines right now. We have friends um, and family all over the U.S. who have lost jobs and who have had to let go of employees and are just plain struggling in all sorts of ways. And I know there isn't one person in the sound of my voice who has not been affected by this unbelievably surreal crisis. So how do we love life when everything we ever knew to be normal, to be free, and to be simple isn't in our power to do right now? And as I was asking myself this question, God reminded me of this verse in the book of John 10:10, 10, 10, it says, the thief comes only in order to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. And this was a verse that um, God brought, brought me to about eight months ago. We were planning our Sisterhood Flourish conference for 2020. So we were about to do our 2019 conference and we were gonna launch the vision for the 2020 conference. And the word for 2019 was refined, which was, a difficult word. The refining process is not fun at all. And so when God gave me this, this verse, John 10, 10, and this word abundance, I was like, that sounds like a fun word. Abundance sounds fun. But when this pandemic began, I, I thought about this verse and I thought about 2020 abundance. And I'm like, did I miss it somehow? Like, how is this the abundant life that we're living right now? And I think the answer is actually in the author of this verse, because you have to ask yourself, who is speaking? It's Jesus. He is telling us in this verse the difference between the life giver and the one who brings fulfillment and the father of lies and destruction. So to the enemy, we give credit for stealing, killing, and destroying. Yeah. But listen, we have nothing to fear. Mm. If we have declared our faith and trust in Jesus, we have a promise of eternity with him. No fear, no questions. So since the enemy doesn't have the fear of death to attack us with, he sets out to steal our peace, our joy, our hope, any ounce of enjoyment here on earth, he doesn't want us to enjoy any of it. But Jesus, the author of this verse, we give him credit for having life, first and foremost. The breath in our lungs is from him. Our beating heart inside of our chest is from oh, him. God. We need to thank Jesus for the basics yes. of life that he has given it to us. But he doesn't just stop at giving us this precious gift of life. He then gives us the gift of enjoying it and having it in abundance to the full till it overflows. And that's what Jesus gets credit for. And honestly, yes, it's hard to see right now, but the goodness of God has not changed. Yeah. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever, which means he is constant. He cannot change. He is the one immovable, unshakable, always stable force in our lives. And when we can acknowledge him for who he is, when we can thank him for this life that we have and thank him for the relationships that we have and thank him for this church family that we have and thank him for the power of technology that enables us to still be together and thank him for sacrificing himself on the cross so we could have and enjoy this abundant life. Everything yes. shifts. 
in a posture of gratitude, we can absolutely love life, this one life he has given us. And when we're loving our lives, everyone around us, all of our relationships will be affected, and maybe they'll start loving their life as well. That's so good. As we love God, as we love people, and we love life, we put it in that order. In fact, this whole story, this whole passage starts with this question. What must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said, if you do this, if you love God, you love people, you love people like you love yourself, you will live. But it all starts with Jesus. You see, if we cut off the source, if we cut off the source of the spring, everything else dies around us. If we cut off the source of provision, we no longer have access to that grace and power that it takes to have good relationship. You see, we forgive because we're forgiven. We love because he first loved us. We give because God has given us everything that pertains to life and godliness. See, God's grace is in the space from here to there. You see, grace in the space isn't just for Easter. Grace is in the space for our relationships, to get us from here to there. In a broken marriage, to get from here in a broken marriage to a whole and healthy marriage. To get from a position of loneliness, to get into a place where you are surrounded by, by people and friends and community, right? To get from here, there's grace in the space, and it all starts with Jesus Christ. Psalms 107, 9 says, for he satisfies the longing soul. If your soul is longing, if you desire God in your life, he, he says, I'll come and I'll fill you. You just got to ask. If you confess with your mouth and believe in the Lord Jesus, the Bible says you will be saved. He, he says this simply, those who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. If you call on the name of Jesus right now, you will be saved. In fact, I want to give you an opportunity and a chance right now to give your life to Christ. And so would you bow your heads and pray with me? And I'm going to pray a simple prayer to give your life to Jesus, to receive him as Lord and Savior. I know we all could use a refreshing, but some of us need to, to get to the source for the first time and see the life of God begin to change your own heart and change the relationships around you. So would you pray this prayer with me? Would you say, I believe in you. Please forgive me. Empty me of my sin. Fill me of your life, Jesus. With your love and grace, I will follow you. Amen. Amen. You know, if you prayed that prayer and you meant it, if you called on the name of the Lord, the Bible says you are saved and all of heaven is rejoicing just over one person. You could help us rejoice with you, though. Will you click on the button on this screen right now that says raise your hand? Click on that button or text the number below. Text the, na text the name of Jesus to that number, and that's just going to let us know that you gave your life to Christ. We are so happy and so excited you did that. Come on. It's awesome. We want to celebrate with you about some other things. Because of your giving this week and last week, we were able to bring lunch to all the nurses at Vieira Hospital yes. and Steward Family Medical Center, which I think was yeah. formerly Wustoff, which was, they were so, so grateful for mm -hmm. that. Yeah, we also have a food pantry, and since this pandemic started, we've been able to give 65,000 pounds of food because of generous giving like yours. That's right. Also, last week, we were able to bring lunch to five different public stores in Brevard County and one Aldi store, and man, they were so blessed and touched that we would think of them. Yeah, it's so good. When you go into a grocery store, you go to Walmart, you can see it on the faces. There's a lot of exhaustion, but you can also see a lot of people with a really good heart willing to serve their community, and it's fun to bless people like that. We're also partnering with Convoy of Hope and with Second Harvest. We're getting two 18-wheelers uh, to show up with food. Uh, the first one's going to happen April 22nd at 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. You can find these type of events on eccc.us slash events. And we're going to drop off there about twenty to 40,000 pounds of food in one pop just like that. So thank hours. you so much yes. in two hours. Thank, thank you, you for, for giving. giving. Yes. It is making a huge difference. It has been incredible to see people take the steps to convert to digital giving and sending checks in the mail. It is amazing. So thank you so much. That's right. And you can give today by clicking on the giving link or do the text to give, or some of y'all already know how to do that. We super appreciate it. We also want to celebrate a few things last weekend. Um, we were on TV for the first time as a church, literally. Uh, and we were on, uh, what is it? GL 45. Good news. GN 45. Sorry. Good news 45. And that was awesome to be a part of that. We've also got some special videos that we've been making. Eight minutes on relationships at 8 p.m. 
on Facebook, and they're going to just kind of pop throughout the week, and they're going to be interviews with people that go to our church just about their relationship, and join us for our 12 p.m. noon prayer times in the 12 o'clock hour. We're going to go ahead now and close with a worship song, Your Goodness, and we're doing something, too, about reflecting at the end. Can you just share a little bit what that's about right now? Yeah, so last week after service, we just took a moment with our family, and after the service was over, we're all kind of sitting there together, and Matt just said, why don't we talk and why don't we pray for a moment? And so he asked everyone this question. He said, what is hard for you right now? And so one by one, my 15-year-old, my 12-year-old, my 8-year-old, myself, Matt, and then my dad, who's living with us right now, we all answered that question, what is hard right now? And my daughter misses her friends. She, you know what she said? She misses church. She misses going to church and being with her church family and her friends. And we all had a different answer. And what we did each time was uh, we listened to what the person said, and then we all responded to each person. We said, there is grace in the space. And so instead of trying to give answers or give, it'll be okay, it'll be over soon, like we don't know that those answers, but we can say there's grace in the space for this. And it was powerful. And so we just want to give you that space to do this afterwards. So after our last song, Your Goodness, which is one of my favorite songs in the East Coast original, uh, we're going to give you a moment. The screen is going to be black, but we're still going to be playing some music. And so just sit with, if you're alone, sit with God for a moment and just tell him what's hard for you right now and let him answer to your heart. There's grace in the space. That's right. Let's close in prayer now. Would you pray with me? God, we love you so much. We thank you for your love for us, that you loved us first, that we could feel that love and that grace in our life. We pray that you would bless the relationships around us, God, that you would show us how to operate in this new norm and even make new friends during this time. And even when we have to separate and isolate, God, show us how to connect and even use this time to heal us in ways that we didn't think was possible before this moment. We thank you, Lord, for touching us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
incredible message. If you accepted Christ today, we would love to know about it. Please let us know. And the way you do that is if you're watching on our website, inside the chat, you'll see a raise a hand button. Go ahead and click that. If you're watching on one of the other platforms, you should see a number pop up. Text Jesus to that number. We want to be a part of your story with him and we are super excited and we want to help you take the next steps. We are launching online community groups. You can join a group or sign up to become a leader at eccc.us slash groups or on our East Coast app. Man, that is incredible. Let's take some time now though, after hearing the word, let's get together as a family and let's reflect. Yeah. You're gonna have some moments of, of music playing in the, in, the, in the background of the video and you'll see some questions come up. We'll get together and just pray together as a family and answer those questions. And let's not move too far away from what God's doing in this moment. Absolutely, and we just wanna remind you one more time that giving is available. You can find the links below and on all of our website, our app, everything that the ministry has not stopped. In fact, we're moving forward in a greater way with what we mentioned before, with the food pantry, with outreaches that we've done to the hospitals, to our local community, even our missionaries around the world. We have worked hard to make sure that they have not missed a beat, that we're fully supporting them. And so you can be a part of that and invest in the ministry that's going forward. So remember guys, just share this service. If you're just jumping in, if you share this service, yeah. we're gonna give another dollar to what we already give to Second Harvest. One dollar feeds one family for one day. Let's feed as many families as we can. Yeah. So don't even wait, just share it right now. I've got nothing else important to say. Yep. Share it. Tell you what guys, we love you. Have a great rest Have of the week. Have a great week. We'll see you guys next time.